Welcome to the third installment of So You Want to Be a Chef. A uh, little update. So, got uh, two subscribers and one person who posted some comments. I'm not going to go into that. I posted it, read it. You don't like it, whatever. So, moving on, got a new haircut. Um, it's pretty cool. I enjoy it. Uh, my sous chef makes fun of me all the time. I've been made fun of multiple times. You need to really, really have a, let's see, you need to have a thick skin on your back to be in the restaurant industry. I don't know if I've said this in any, as a matter of fact, I haven't said this in any of my videos. It's really, really important for you to concentrate and focus. Uh, don't let anybody bust your balls to the point where you get angry or aggravated. I, I definitely have been there, um, and I'm human, and it's happened to me, and I've got aggravated. But, but really try, when somebody's really busting your chops, just remind yourself how bad you want this. Because bottom line here is when you're an executive chef somewhere, um, most likely they'll still be sitting there on whatever mindless job they had before, whatever. Bottom line is take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, they're just busting your balls. Um, <clears throat> so uh, a, kind of a, a little bit of update on the school front as well. Um, in, in, in Well, I keep saying um, <laughs> you're going to hate me, man. You're really going to hate me. Uh, so in the school front, my, my teacher was really, really getting on me real hard. And, and it was just, you know, she's really getting on my back and, and just everything at work and school. And I was just like really, really frustrated. But I was still pushing because, you know, this is, this is what I want. And um, so I, I, she, I spoke to the director of education at Le Cordon Bleu. And I was like, hey, right in front of her in the, uh, before my class, hey, I really would like to speak to you within the next few days. I want to address a few issues. He's like, okay. Um, and, and I think the teacher overheard that. Her, overheard that. So I'm going to assume that she overheard it. And based upon that, I'm going to explain the situation as it unfolded. Uh, at the end of class, well, first off, from that moment on, she was being very sympathetic. Uh, her, her approach changed towards me. It was less aggressive and more nurturing and caring. Um, at the end of that, <clears throat> um, shit. <laughs> and it just happens, man. You're gonna have to fucking accept it or not watch the video. Uh, she, she, at the end of class, approached everybody, everybody uh, as one and said, hey, you know, if anybody has any issues or anything, let me know. Um, if you have any problems, I will be here after class. Please discuss it with me. Uh, if you get into the industry and you go over to the, the, somebody's head too many times, you know you're gonna have issues. So so let's deal uh, deal with this blah blah blah. So I felt as if she was she saw me speak to the guy and was basically like, okay, John, you need to talk to me. Um, and yeah, so that I did. I spoke to her. I, I was like, hey, you know what's going on? Um, is basically I work. 10 hours sometimes, then go straight to school. I don't have time to read. Sometimes I don't have a lunch break. You know, I, I, I really try to pay attention. The way my last instructor explained things was, uh, I guess, I guess, I guess it, 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 he, he, okay, bottom line here is he didn't have to, he, we didn't have to read. He would explain things and demonstrate them and do them in such a way that that it was still kind of hard, but you would you would get the gist of it. B bottom line, you know what I mean. In her class, she didn't do it. It was just like, okay, this is what you're supposed to do, and go do it. And then you'd go to do it, and you're like, well, I've never cooked this before. I've never done this before, you know. And she would give you these smart aleck answers. Well, you know, so that's what I expressed to her. And she was like, okay, well, you know, I didn't know that it was so hard for you because you're working, you're doing this, and you don't have any money, and nobody's paying for your class. You know, um, we're going to really, maybe you should switch shifts because you have some animosity with some of the people here. That's another thing that I discuss as well because there's a few people that I've just butted heads with at class. And, and it happens, you know what I mean? Um, unfortunately, I, I feel... I'm not going to lie, I, I, I don't want to feel above everybody else, but I feel since I'm working in this industry right now and, and, and then working with these kids at school that they're just, they're being very childish and it's like you are going to be busting ass 
10, 16 hour, 10, 14 hour days next to somebody. You know what I mean? The entire time you have to get along. You have to figure something out. And it's just like, bam, bam. But anyways, I'm not going to get into that. I'm getting distracted. So I spoke to the teacher and um, she said maybe you should move into another class. Uh, I applied for the CIA. Um, I told her that. And um, the next the next day, uh, middle of the day, she called me outside of class and said that she wanted to be my mentor. And she gave me this book. Hold on. Oh, one second, one second. All right. Um, food and cooking, the science um, and lore of the kitchen. Harold McGee. Get this book. Get it. If you want to be a chef in any capacity, holy shit. Okay, I've read 20, 30 pages in. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just discovering the ins and outs of milk right now. And by far, this is like a culinary school in a book. If they're not going to tell you exactly how to cook something, but they'll tell you the science behind it. And if you're the sort of person that can, that can, you know what I mean, break those things down, you're like an engineer sort of person, you know, you'll be able to just look at food in a different way and, and, and know exactly why and how to control your temperatures just to be realizing that milk is scolding at this temperature and when it boils and it's separating and curding and proteins and clarified butter and uh, it's the wealth of information. It's amazing. Buy that book. So she told she she actually gave not gave me that book, but she told me I could borrow her book. That's her copy from 1984. So I was ecstatic. I was like, okay, she's gonna be my mentor. And she the next two days were great. She was wonderful. She was really really nice to me and nurturing. And I was like, oh cool, okay. You know, she really wants to help and be my teacher and and and, and do a good job at it. You know. After that she started to kind of revert back into her own ways and that was after i spoke to the DOE direct, or director of education and and told her what a wonderful job she's doing so i don't know if he spoke to her and now she's like okay well everything's fine now so i can go back to being a bitch whatever we're gonna find out in due time because that that day the the you know two good days and there then the third day was kind of a bad day because I was a sous chef that day. We had these little positions inside our kitchens at school, and I was a sous chef there. And um, <clears throat> we, we, me and this other kid, we had an agreement to basically uh, have a list of job titles and things for each other, or for everybody to do, so we get things done. And he was a sanitation steward, this gentleman. And um, I use that term loosely. And he, he was 30 something years old, you know, um, and, and he, you know, he works as a waiter. So, you know, I, I would think, hey, this guy is, we're going to work together as a team. Everything's going to be cool. Sure enough, um, I approached him and and asked him what's up. And everything seemed fine until we actually went to go do the work. Now, him and this other kid, uh, which was the food steward, decided to drop stock. And he completely just, like, dropped the ball. Didn't even do it. So I took his little paper from him, was assigning people and things to do, and, you know, everybody's moving pretty slow. I was trying to get everybody to hustle, but we got a lot of stuff done, you know what I mean? And I think that I did a pretty good job in that role. Fortunately, when I approached him and said, hey, dude, put some pep in your step, he got all offended, and, you know, it was just, it was ridiculous, put it that way. He was acting very childish. Towards the end of class, he was wiping the window down, and I was like, hey, man, I already got somebody to do that. Can you go over there and take care of the, the dish pit? Dude, you're sanitation steward. It's your job to take care of those things. And he completely didn't do his job. Everything fell back on me. Whatever. You know, I'm bitching here. But it's what happened, and I mm, can't. I'm saying a little bit ticked off about it. But I handled it. I took care of it. I actually was very frustrated. At the end of class, I spoke to the chef. She said, don't worry about that. Um, you know, that, 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 that's, that, you know, you worry about your education and she's right. Um, in, in the same regard though, I think that he and her kind of have like a little relationship and I don't mean in that kind of, you know, relationship, but I mean, uh, I think, I think that the, the, the teachers put, has a liking to him. And I think that's why he's acting the way he is. Anyways. Uh, 15 seconds less left in this video. That is basically the update as of now. Um, 
I hope you enjoy the videos. If you have any suggestions as far as what I should focus on or what should be done in the videos, please comment down there, please. Uh, that way we can kind of get everything together. Ten minutes is up. Thank you very much for your time. You take care.